Hello and welcome to another edition of Zog Science. Um, today what we're going to do is we're going to look at some pedigrees and how um, to interpret them and uh, how to create them. So what we can see right here uh, is that we have just sort of a basic pedigree. Um, the circles are going to represent females and the squares are going to represent males. Um, this line right here is showing us that these two are married and then these are going to be their offspring. Um, now when we have a shaded in circle or a shaded in square, that's going to be showing us that we have a, um, the person is afflicted with the trait or has the trait or is, has the disease. Um, so in this case they have two offspring, one of them is a female who has the uh, disease and one of them is a male who does not. Now um, if we interpret this, if we look at this, we have two choices, we can either, or three choices, we can either say that this is sex linked that this is um, a autosomal recessive or that this is autosomal dominant. Um, and just by looking at this, we're gonna go ahead and say that this is an autosomal recessive. The reason why, okay? The only way that um, she could have received an X that, had the, um, that has the trait and therefore uh, been, or, and therefore have the disease is if her father has it as well and he doesn't. Um, if it was a dominant trait, then one of the parents would have also had to have had it, and they do not, so therefore we're left with the um, idea that this is going to be a recessive trait. Now what we can do with this is we can then add in our, um, we can add in our genotypes uh, based on this. So we know that she, and uh, let's just use T's because they're nice and easy to draw. She's going to be little t, little t. Um, and then we've got our our uh, parents, right? We know that they are going to be uh, big T, little t, big T, little t. And I know that they have to be heterozygous because that's the only way that we can have um, her with the trait. Uh, now, the what we're going to do now is we're going to try to figure out how exactly what or what is the genotype here because he can either be big T, little t, or big T, big t, right? One or the other. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a test cross, and in a test cross, what we're going to do is we're going to have them, or we're going to cross a heterozygous individual with a, or someone that we don't know, with a homozygous um, recessive individual. And what that's going to do is it's going to give us the opportunity to find out exactly uh, what genotype he has. All right, so we draw our line, show that he, they're having offspring. All right, and what we're going to discover here is that we've got offspring like this. We'll just extend those lines down. All right, so we know that she, his wife is little t, little t. We know that he has a, a son that is also little t, little t. So that must mean that he is heterozygous because otherwise he cannot pass the little t on and what we know this son is well we know that he doesn't have the trait so he's got one big t but he's also going to be a carrier because he has a little t thanks for watching and i'll see y'all next time